Mic check, test one, two, mic check. Mic check, one, two. Test, mic test, one, two. Check, mic check. Good morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration here at Our Lady of Guadalupe and Parish, and Shrine, I'm sorry. We welcome all of you joining us here and this, from the safety of your vehicle. Please remember to tune your radio to 100.9 so that you may clearly hear our Lord's message. We, are, we also welcome all of you joining us on social media. Our mass intention for today are for the souls of Luis and Irene Lopez by Joe and Terry Padilla and by Ekatrina Stansil by Corina Vasilaki. Our opening song is I Will Call Upon the Lord. Before we begin our celebration, let us greet each other by honking your horns. And now, my brothers and sisters, we will now enter into God's presence with our principal celebrant, Father David Herrera, accompanied by, by Father Freddy Perez and Deacon Ricardo Torres. Thank you, and God bless you. Upon the Lord, call upon the who is worthy to be praised. Who is worthy to be so praised? shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord live and blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Let's place ourselves in the presence of our God under the power of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Friends, as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment to recognize the sinfulness within. We ask the Lord to come with his loving embrace of mercy. You were to heal the contrite of heart.
May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to us, your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, to make fervent in faith, hope, and charity. We may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Granted, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in unity the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pastor, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they know no, so that they no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up a righteous shoot to David. Ask king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for the years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the, Lord, by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with the commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Being hard to partner this may well in one of their opinions, not Father, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing his praise, sing his praise, sing hallelujah to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away. Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves in a deserted, to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot, from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowds, he saw, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. See his Sing his praise, sing hallelujah to the Lord, sing hallelujah to the Lord, sing hallelujah to the Lord. My friends, it's very tempting to want to start this homily and make this homily about the importance of rest in the life of the pastor. But luckily for you, this will not be that homily. But if you may know, my day off is on Mondays, also with Father David. So if you have a problem or if you're planning to die, please don't do it on Mondays. We will not be around. We may be able to find another priest or a deacon, but uh, don't, don't count on us being around because we need our rest. And it's an important thing of the Lord, so don't think for a minute that the gospel that is proclaimed today is about how one should be a workaholic. There is a deeper meaning for Jesus wanting to go seek rest and then stopping. But before that, last week Father David very well preached about the importance of the priesthood in our faith. How we bring about the Eucharist to you and without the Eucharist there is no church. So going with that, we continue that further identity of the priesthood that we have as the ordained ministers, but more importantly, the priesthood that is found in each and every one of you. My friends, today's gospel takes up where it left off last time, except this time the disciples are coming back to Jesus Christ after they've been on their journey 
sharing the word of the Lord, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus looks at his disciples and says to them the words that every minister wants to hear after a good long day of ministering. Let's go eat and rest. Believe me, there is nothing sweeter than that on a Sunday afternoon than to know that I'm done with the 2 p.m. Mass and I can go rest a little bit. Jesus, however, is moved from within. But before we get to that, in the scriptures today, there is an imagery that is given to us of Jesus and the disciples and of the Christian people. That image is of the shepherd. We hear about the shepherd, we hear about, Woe to them who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. And why is that? Well, what is the job of a pastor? So when we think about pastors these days, we may think about the separated brothers of ours context of pastor, that they're the ones that lead a church and they pastor a church. Well, rightly so. That's even a moniker that we use in the Catholic Church. Pastor is the person in charge of a parish. If I mess up and if I do something wrong, the one who really has to answer to the bishop of why all this happened is Father David. But Father David is smart. If you look at our bulletin, you see who our main pastor is of this church. It's Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Father David and I are just the assistants, along with the deacons. So we also know that there is an obligation of us of being a good pastor. When I was a child, one of my first memories that I have is going to Mexico with my family. And being there, my grandfather had um, various animals. He had cows, lambs, goats, horses, and each one of them had to be tended in a specific and particular manner. You can't necessarily treat horses like you treat lambs, or else they'll get really fat. You can't treat lambs like you treat horses, or else they get really skinny. So each one of them has to have their own shepherd pastoring them to lead them to waters and lead them to grasslands. My cousins and family friends were the pastors of my grandfather. In fact, my father was my grandfather's pastorcito. It's actually how he met my mother, was hitting on the boss's daughter. (laughs) That's another story for another day. When I would see my cousins come home in a face of panic, I would be able to automatically tell, oh, this is not good. Because they would have to respond to my grandfather. Don Jesus me perdió una borreguita. I lost a lamb. My grandfather would probably say something like, it's okay, just go look for it. They would come back with it and look for it, or they would come and have to answer for it. Usually having to give up maybe some living wages to make up for the animal that they lost. On one occasion, I recall one of the horses of my grandfather being lost. And so they come to our house, and they knock on my grandfather's door, and they say, we can't find Lucero. So we took off to the mountains, inheritance of my family, to look for this horse. I walked along the side of my father, and that was the first time I ever drank from a fresh spring, untapped. (laughs) Not out of a bottle, but very nice, fresh water. We didn't find the horse, but I remember the horse being found. And there was great joy when that horse was found and we led him back to our pasture lands. El potrero is what you call where horses pasture usually. My friends, that identity of the pastor is very well ingrained with me because of the good men that showed me what it was to care for simple animals. Very simply put, if I were to believe in reincarnation, which we don't believe in reincarnation, but if I were to be reincarnated in one thing, I wish I would come back as one of my father's animals. Because that man is benevolent in how he treats his animals, how he cares for his animals, how he nurtures and safeguards his animals. But don't get me wrong, being his son is even much better, for I belong to my father. And I've always been nurtured by that man and fed by that man and felt security with that man. So I have the image of the pastor in my head very well ingrained beyond what we know as church and as we understand what the readings are calling forth in a pastor. 
Now, in my first few years of priesthood, that image of pastor was a bit distorted. After being newly ordained, I came into the church to read on four different occasions letters of scandal. As a young priest, that shook my word. I want to say that I was without having anything to say to the people other than, I'm sorry for us as pastors have failed you. I was very remorseful during the times of those letters and of great scandal in our church. For some reason, having to find in myself asking pardon to the people to be reconciled to the image of the pastors of the men that we should be. And don't get me wrong, you are going to receive side eyes from us every once in a while. You will encounter us on not our best day. We will fail you. There is no doubt about that. That is only ingrained in our human nature to fail. All right, brothers and sisters, but we represent is larger than ourselves. And we strive as genuine pastors of our Lord Jesus Christ to live out that living example of what a pastor really is. Somebody that nurtures, that gives lives, and that safeguards their flock. So my friends, please do know that we as your pastors, we're very human, open to human failure. But at the same time, we put our faith on that pastors of pastor on that good shepherd that we know will lead us and will not fill us in, will always be there, will always nurture us. I came to find this out in one of the hardest ways possible. In 2008, after I came back from my missionary work, I went home. And towards the end of my summer, my uncle came down from Milwaukee to be with us. And we went with my grandmother and my mother to San Antonio to have a good little Sunday good time. Who wasn't with my uncle was my, we would say in Spanish, primo hermano, Efren, who was my cousin who I was closest to. I was raised with him. He was actually raised with us. His father left him with us when he was very young, and my mother re reared him and nurtured him and protected him. Coming back from San Antonio, I was working at my parents' place, at their shop, at their tortilla shop, and I get a phone call from my mom. You might have to go to Milwaukee real soon with your uncle. Ephraim's not doing well. What's happening? I didn't understand the nature of the conversation. Well, she hangs up the phone and she drives up to the business and she says, Mijo, Ephraim's not good. He's probably not going to make it. I was shocked. I was in disbelief. I still wanted him to be alive. A phone call would come to my mother when I was in front of her, in which I will find out that my cousin had been murdered, and he did not make it. My mom says to me, close up the shop and come home. I closed up the shop, and I couldn't go home. I wanted answers. I wanted to know. So I drive up to the church, and I knock to the door of Father David, spiritual father that he's always been to me, my pastor at the time, and he was not home. I became very angry at the moment. I noticed that the church door was open after Sunday services, and I went inside. I went to the tabernacle, and how I wish I can tell you that I fell to my knees and started praying for understanding and patience and counsel. But my friends, I did what the fury inside of me had moved me to do had forced me to encounter my shepherd and beat him on the chest until he responded to me where he was. I beat down on the tabernacle until I heard God's voice. As I asked him, where are you? Where are you right now? Answer me. My friends, 
I don't take that back for beating down on the tabernacle because our God can take it. If he can take the cross, he can take our berrinches. As I'm sitting there and just getting exhausted and asking these questions to our God, he says to me the words that every pastor should say to his flock. I am here. I allowed that to calm down my soul, to bring it to rest, bring it to understanding, bring it to that counsel that I was looking for. And I just allowed my pastor to be moved from within to nurture me. My friends, we hear this in the gospel today that Jesus does just that. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. Let me give you the actual translation. It actually said that he had a gut reaction in the Greek. And why is it the gut? Because the Greeks do not think with their head and emotion. Jesus did not know that his people needed him. The Greeks did not move with their heart. And he felt that they needed him. The Greeks moved with their stomach, with their gut. From the most inward part of the human being was the Jesus Christ moved with compassion is what we actually read in the Greek at that point in the gospel. My friends, this is why I said that Jesus just was not a workaholic. Because believe me when I say he was fully human and he was tired and he saw that his disciples were tired and they were hungry. Believe me when I say they were going for a nap and some food. So this is not the homily that shows us that we should be workaholics. This is the homily, however, that shows us that we should move with compassion from with deep within when we see the needs of others arise. And be like the pastor at the time and just say, I am here. My friends, that is the good shepherd. That is what the shepherd does in our life is a constant reminder of who he is as not only our God, but who he is as our divine and good shepherd. Always present, always protecting, always nurturing, bringing us to life living waters. My friends, who is your good shepherd and how do you find him? Do realize that this is not a criticism against Father David. In fact, later on that month, I met with him and I thanked him. I said, you've done the most important thing in my spiritual life. You were absent, so it made me come to Christ and realize where he was at when I needed him the most. And he made himself present to me. My friends, that is the image of the good shepherd that we should have of our priest. Someone that is there for you. Do not stop bothering us. When you see that we're not in our best days, don't worry about that. Come up to us and say, Father, I need you right now. When you have that sick call, you don't know who to call, you know our number. When you have that person that you need in my, your life to be a friend, you know where to find us. Do not tire of looking for your pastors, for that is not only our ordained ministry, but that is all what we are all called as the baptized of Jesus Christ. To be ever so present to the needs of others. Most recently in my young priesthood, the one place that I experienced this in this past few months was in the unaccompanied minor camps. When the world had turned the back on them. When politicians were arguing for their situation. They called on little old me to show up and do a mess. And that's all they would let me do. And do believe me when I say little old me, because I get there and in the face of a hundred something, seven to ten year olds and about 300 teenage girls... There is nothing that I could have said or done 
to bring that security, that nurturing into their life that only mom and dad or the person that they love the most could provide to them at that moment. So I say to my God, God, what am I doing here right now with these children who need somebody to be with them? But what are you doing there? Be present. And my brothers and sisters, for about two months, that's all I can do. Don't get me wrong. The selfishness need to make myself feel good would kick in. I would want to buy them something. I would want people to give them money. But in all honesty, the only thing that I was doing was being a sorry pastor. Because I wanted myself to feel good that I was giving them something. That's foolishness. For the one thing that I gave them, you cannot buy. You can only give the presence of yourself among those people that are hopeless. You become hope. Among the people that are loveless, you become love. Among the stranger, you become a friend. And my friends, that has been a beautiful reward in my life to be able to experience in that camp with children that nobody wanted, children that have been rejected, children who have been forgotten, cast away by society. I was present with them. That affirmed my role as pastor, but that's just not limited to me, my friends. For those children, and just like all of us here gathered together, are like what we hear in that second reading of Paul. For brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity, through his flesh abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He who came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. My friends, we are the ordained pastors. But for one second, do not think that you do not have a responsibility to be pastors of your own domain. That is simply put, by your baptism, in baptism, we are a nation of prophets, a nation of kings, and a nation of priests in the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the washing of our baptism, we have the faculty and responsibility to pastor this world to everlasting glory. That is just not the job of the priest. When you use the priest as, oh, why does my son or daughter don't come to church? My answer to parents is usually, why is it an option? Is it not your obligation to make sure your children go to heaven? Why would you make that an option? Pastor your houses, pastor your lives, pastor this world to everlasting glory. That is the call that is given to the disciples. To be like Jesus, and even Jesus says this himself, you will do more than the works that I did, and mightier. My friends, this is only possible through that ordination that we have in our baptism. Not the ordination, but the priesthood that is bestowed upon us. The priesthood of Jesus Christ to be able to pray for this world that so needs good pastors in the everyday Not just on Sundays. Not just when you most need it. But for the world that is falling apart of suffering and need, it needs all of us to become pastors. To care, to nurture, to safeguard. My brothers and sisters, how do you experience your good pastor these days? That good and sweet caring shepherd How is he ever so present in your life who leads you to the streams of living water? 
Amen. Let us come together now as we renew our faith, as we profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, placing our trust in the Good Shepherd, we present our needs. <clears throat> For the holy shepherds of the church, that they may tend God's flock with vigilance and integrity so that no one need fear or tremble and none will be missing in God's sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who shepherd the nations, that they may be righteous, governing wisely, and doing what is just and right in their lands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. That we who are led by restful waters guide safely through the dark valleys, anointed with fragrant oil and given an overflowing banquet in the Eucharist, may respond with trust, obedience, and thanksgiving to the care of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. For the lost sheep, those who have wandered far away from the life-giving waters of the Holy Sacraments, that our prayers and our love and the gentle inspiration of the Holy Spirit may bring them back, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who need our intercession, the sick, the poor, the hungry, the grieving, the most forgotten little ones in our midst, that Jesus may call them apart to rest for a while, at the feast of his loving compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That Jesus may be the peace of our faithful departed ones, breaking down every barrier of sin in his precious blood and leading them into the everlasting pastures of heavenly bliss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. And now, in the silence of your hearts, or even out loud in your own cars, you may add your own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We now ask for the power of intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Oh, 
Now that the gifts have been prepared, my friends, let us pray that this, our sacrifice, and the very sacrifice of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, Except we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life, for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany us by the power of the Holy Spirit, and lead us along the path of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts our bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. And again, he gave you thanks and praise. He then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Behold, my friends, the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of us, your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son and whose body and blood we have communion and so having called us to your table lord confirm us in unity so that together with friends or pope and michael or bishop with all bishops priests and deacons and your entire people as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Today we remember Luis and Irene Lopez, Escaterne Estanciel, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in light of your face and the resurrection given the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, when we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Joseph, and with all the saints who will praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him and with, with him, him and in him, him O God, Almighty Father, Father in, in the unity the of the Holy Spirit, Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, my friends, we join our good shepherd as we pray in the words that he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
Yes, Lord, we, your people, gather before you and we pray that you deliver us from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you. It is my peace that I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and greatly grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Good Shepherd always be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, my friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof. roof. 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Just a simple reminder, if you're not able to get down from your cars, put on your hazard lights, and we will come to you so that you might receive the body of Christ. For those who cannot receive sacramentally at this time, we offer the following spiritual, spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing I shall want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of your peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my
Let us pray. Graciously be present to us, your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Do you believe we have a few announcements to be made? Good morning, brothers and sisters. I don't speak your language, but... I, tr I will try to speak as well as possible for me. 
I'm sorry for the mistakes. My name is Faustino Sanchez. I'm a Benedict monk. When I speak English, uh, I'm not sure if I say monkey or monk. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I am a monkey monk. Uh, I'm from Mexico City. And thanks to help to Father David, I am in the parking Casa de Amigos, selling articles religious uh, that we make in our monastery for help. Three nursing houses, is correct? Houses. Yeah. Uh, because Mexico is in an economical difficult situation. Brothers and sisters, I know my problems, it's, it's not your problems, and my country is not your country, but I know everybody are children of, of God, and God is a good father all time. I hope you can help us. Um, I'm working for the poor people in my country. Thank you so much. Happy Sunday with your family. I think he did very well in English, did he not? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yes. But I will correct one thing that he said, and it's not his English. He said, I know that our problem is not your problem. Wait a minute. Here at Our Lady Guadalupe, we know that the body of Christ, if one suffers, all suffer. If one rejoice, all rejoice. And so I'm just going to correct that. His problem, as he called it, is our problem. And so I'm going to ask you to sell, uh, to, yes, amen, amen. Well, now my problem is your problem. Yes. Listen him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I hope you help. So, so help him out. He's across uh, selling uh, our, uh, religious articles uh, across in the uh, parking lot of Casa de Amigos. Thank you. Happy day. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Oh, good. <laughs> you want to make sure? <laughs> I wanted to remind. You're not, remind you're not on. You're not on. Wanted to remind all of you here, uh, especially those young men that may be thinking about a call to the priesthood or wanting to know more about the call to the priesthood. Uh, the Diocese of San Angelo in San Angelo will be hosting a one-day retreat for anybody who is in 11th grade and higher who is wanting to know more about the priesthood. It's not to commit to the priesthood, it's just to inform yourself a bit more. I, I really do doubt that Guadalupe does not have one young man to send to San Angelo. Amen. I, I really do doubt it heavily. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so if, if you're a young man that has some questions about the priesthood, come talk to Father David and I. If you know a young man, invite him. And if you can't invite him, give his name to us and we'll do that invitation. But let me just be really honest with you. A lot of vocations die because parents and the communities do not support vocations. Here at Guadalupe, we know we support vocations. So encourage your men for the priesthood and pray for them. We're going to give them a ride to San Angelo and feed them. So I don't know what else they want. <laughs> so needless to say, if you know somebody or if you yourself are interested in priesthood, come talk to Father and Dave with me. It's next Saturday. This Tuesday, we will have our first youth group gathering in the All Saints Hall at 7 p.m. It's going to be a preview youth ministry and movie night where I'll break down a little bit what we're going to be doing for youth group this year, and we'll be watching a movie, maybe the new Space Jam. I can't make any promises. But please come out. It will be at 7 p.m. We'll have snacks for the whole family and youth, youth for junior high and high school particularly. But if you just want to come out and, and support the youth ministry and enjoy some a family atmosphere, please do come out. It will be our first official event to kick off our youth ministry. Thank you so much for your prayers, and I'm looking forward to your support. Amen. Tuesday. Tuesday, 7 p.m., All Saints Hall. Thank you. Amen. Also, before we leave, we want to bless all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. I do know of a, a couple of with birthdays. Evelina Estrada, Avery, and Emma Lopez. If you are also celebrating a birthday or anniversary, put on your hazard lights or honk your horn and let us know that you're here. Okay, we have, we have a, just a very few. Let's bless them. Father God, we give you great thanks for sending your son into this world to show us that image of the Good Shepherd. We would ask that you bless us all as your priests through, wa through the waters of baptism so that we might shepherd the people that you lead to us and lead them closer to you. We bless those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries so that as you renew their faith, blessing them with everything that they need, Help them be good witnesses within this world to further about your kingdom and to strengthen your divine presence in the world that you place them in. 
And so we bless them under the power of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Happy birthday. <laughs> we'll do the vocation prayer. Prayer for vocations. Lord Jesus, as you once called the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet invitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace of responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops, priests, and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians and to all those who are carrying out the idea of a life totally consecrated to your service. Mary, Mother of the Church, the motto of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord who caused us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Also, before the final blessing, you may have noticed that an extra person here around the altar. We do have uh, Sergio. Sergio are, are here because last Saturday he received the ministry of acolyte from our bishop. But as Deacon Ricardo knows, his ministry is next to impossible without the support of your spouse, of your wife. And so I want to introduce to you our newest acolyte, Sergio and Veronica, who's also going through this program. Sergio is in the, as a candidate for the diaconate program within our diocese. And so we love him and we support him. And I introduce him to you as our new acolyte in the church. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say thank you with the open heart for all your support and all your love, and especially for all your prayers. I am humbly blessed and grateful that I have been chosen for this vocation. And God willing, in June of next year, my passage will continue on into the diaconate. I ask you to pray for my brothers who are in formation with me, as myself, in prayers. And brothers and sisters, if you have any inclination of, to this vocation, whether it's to the diaconate or to the priesthood, please respond. Please respond, as Father Freddie had said, we're all called to be pastors and shepherds and answer God in a way that he has answered us, which is, I am here. I thank you so much. God bless you. And may God, and may, may God be with you. Amen. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are holy, you are holy, you are mighty, you are mighty, you are worthy, you are worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of praise, I will follow, I will follow, I will listen, and I will listen, I will love you. Sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love them, adore Him. I will bow down before Him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love Him, adore Him. I will bow down before Him. Up.
peace and I will live my life for you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in his day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray, pray for, for us. us.